Hi everyone, this is Allie, the Executive Director over at Family Promise, and we're so excited to have you here with us today, and we're just going to give you a brief overview of Family Promise and what it looks like to volunteer with Family Promise. And I am Jordan Dotson. I'm the Community Director here at Family Promise, and I'm so uh, excited and grateful that you took the time to be at this training. And so we're going to jump right in. Uh, so here we go. All right. So Family Promise of Greater Denver, our overarching goal is uh, ending homelessness one family at a time. We have a big idea at Family Promise. We've been around for 20 years and our shelter model works and that's really exciting. Uh, we bring together host congregations. We have 25 host congregations who shelter families experiencing homelessness across the metro area. We have another almost 50 support congregations who help um, through financial assistance, volunteers, and in other capacities as well. We work on a rotating schedule as a shelter, which means our shelters are seven days at a time at each of those unique host congregations. So every Sunday, our families are moving to a new location, meeting new volunteers, and being in a new space and what we like to call home. Uh, we also provide case management support for all of our families where we're working towards housing, employment, and savings goals so that families, when they leave Family Promise, um, are ready to get back out there in the world and um, be sustainable as a family and really help support their families. We also have a day site center that's open seven days a week, and that's where all the resources are. So we have a computer lab, we have an outdoor space, a kitchen area, three full restrooms, laundry facilities, um, a playroom, and it's just, again, a kind of a second home and a safe space for the families to be. And lastly, our community partners outside of our host congregations, um, community partners are so important to our mission. Um, so we partner with a lot of different agencies doing referrals and getting support for our families, and we'll go into that a little bit more in detail. Did you know that Family Promise is a national organization? Uh, we now have 206 affiliates across the nation. I want to say we are in 47 states now. So as you can see from this map, hopefully you can see a little bit um, that we are really all across the nation. We started in Summit, New Jersey. So uh, way to your right there in New Jersey, there are a lot of different affiliates within um, the eastern part of the United States and then um, all across the nation. We're also different from a lot of shelters in that about 74 percent of the families that we serve leave with more stable housing. The average shelter that is not a family promise shelter um, is about 25 percent stable housing. So we have a great success rate and we're really really setting families up for the long haul in that stable housing environment. We have served over 700,000 individuals as family promise across the nation since we started in 1989. So lots of families, lots of lives touched by this organization. Again, we are we continue to grow our reach as a national um, organization. We have over 150 volunteers nationwide, and over 6,000 congregations, just like yours, are involved um, in the United States, which is such an incredible uh, mission that we're all accomplishing together. In Denver, we opened 20 years ago. So we this year in uh, 2017, we are celebrating 20 years. We started with 10 different congregations. And as I mentioned earlier, we now have 25 congregations that shelter our families. Here locally, we have over a thousand volunteers that support our mission. And we've served over 1,200 families as they've transitioned out of homelessness. Our mission statement is to help families experiencing homelessness by providing emergency shelter, meals, and supportive services on the path to self-sufficiency. Our goal at Family Promise is that families, um, when they come back to us, they come back with their successes so that we can celebrate with them, uh, walk alongside them as they gain sustainable independence. And this year in 2017, we have a specific theme statement, and that's giving families the space to dream again. Many of the families that we serve um, 
have lost hope. And this uh, shelter is often their last opportunity for a safety net. And we are here as a staff, as a community, to really show them that they have a voice, that they have an opportunity, and to help them uh, dream and to help them see that hope. We'd love to show a brief video. It's just kind of an overarching um, opportunity to see uh, what we do at Family Promise. So um, at this time, you can pause the video and start that overview video. Well, as we jump back into our PowerPoint, um, uh, I want to go ahead and kind of share about Family Promise's unique focus. Um, to, for starters, one of the things that makes Family Promise unique is the fact that we mobilize existing community resources. We, we use congregations' facilities like yours uh, to, to fulfill a need in our city. So, so we take uh, an opportunity that's, that's often sitting empty and we, we use it for people who are often overlooked. And so it's a really awesome partnership um, that we feel is mobilizing these resources that otherwise uh, weren't being used as much as they could be. The other focus is that we are a family-only shelter. So um, one of the requirements for a family to be in our program is that they would have a dependent under the age of 18. And so that we are a full family shelter. Um, we are also volunteer driven. So the experience that our families have while they're here in our program is 100% um, uh, an experience that they receive from our volunteers. Our volunteers are the ones interacting with families. Our, our congregations are supplying the, the meals, um, the, the rides to and from our day site, back to the congregation. Uh, our volunteers are, 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 are putting together and helping families when it comes to, uh, you know, events, night activities at night, you know, uh, helping with homework and you know, running around with the little kiddos. All of this is done through volunteers. And last year in 2016, we had over 40,000 volunteer hours donated. So we are definitely volunteer driven. And lastly, our unique focus that we share and have is our continued care. We, we use the phrase often that we are more than a shelter. Because what we try to offer to our families is really a lifeline and somebody in your corner for your life, not just for a season where you're struggling, but we have put into place some programs that continue to care for our families uh, for up to two years after um, they have left our uh, emergency core shelter program. So we really want to be with families for the long haul, and we do that through our mentoring program and uh, our home program, which again, we're going to get to here in a little bit. But these are some of our unique focuses that we believe make Family Promise special. I also want to go over uh, a question we often get is, is, you know, what leads to homelessness? What causes our families to need uh, the services that we provide here at Family Promise? And, you know, the number one thing that we, we have discovered in 2016 was when we asked families was that uh, – displacement or an, an inability to pay their rent was the, the number one reason. Here in Denver, we all know that uh, rental costs and housing uh, prices are going up and they continue to do so. It's, um, it's difficult and hard for a lot of people. And that, does, and that includes our families who, you know, maybe they were in an apartment or in a house for a while and due to the increase, they couldn't keep up, couldn't continue to make their, their payments. Um, and ultimately left them homeless. Uh, that was the number one. After that, we had unable to find employment, um, families moving from out of state into Denver. Maybe they had a, a friend or a family member here that promised them a, a place to stay, and they, they moved with that hope and that opportunity and then arrived here and it fell through, and now they're, they're kind of stuck, and we see a lot of that. And then domestic violence, uh, family breakup, and and illness. These are just some of, obviously it's not an exhaustive list, but these are the some of the main reasons why our families in 2016 were experiencing homelessness. Now who are our guests? Well, we serve all different types of, of families and, and we get the opportunity to really um, 
serve our families as a whole. But here are um, the breakdowns in terms of percentages of families that we served in 2016 so that you have an understanding of the types of families that might be at your congregation as you host. Last year, 48% of our families were single mothers with children. Um, so obviously that is the, the biggest uh, for us, and, and that was a majority. Um, Two-parent families made up 30%, 36% of the families we served. Single fathers with children were 14%. And then grandparents, 2%, and then legal guardians with custody of minor children. We didn't have any of those, but we would accept a legal guardian with custody of a minor child. Um, and that's kind of who our guests were last year and is a, a typical picture of who we serve at Family Promise. And then what makes a family eligible for our program? And this is a great question um, that, that you'll, you'll encounter. You know, as people are talking to you and you're sharing about Family Promise. Uh, for us, uh, ultimately, again, like I mentioned before, it, we have to have a dependent under the age of 18. So an adult with a minor um, is, is first and for, foremost, the, the very first question we ask is, do you have a kiddo under the age of 18? Also, in our program, um, the, the family needs to... Uh, Poor, you know, uh, put on display a, a an, an effort and drive, an ability to kind of seek or gain employment, full time school, uh, really just kind of showing that we're will they're willing to meet us where we're willing to meet them, right in the middle, and work together to find housing for them and their family, uh, and then engagement. Uh, it's we you know we have a program. We we are more than a shelter. It's not just a place to sleep at night. We provide our families with you know, case management and uh, mentorships and uh, life skills classes and all of this is designed to help families be self-sufficient and successful as they move out of our program. So for us, engagement with the program is key and then also a background check. We run a background check on all of our family members um, and uh, to make sure that we maintain a, a safe place uh, for families while they're in this uh, program. Our host congregations, we're going to do more of a brief overview of um, what it looks like to be at our host congregations. Uh, so we do believe that everyone needs a safe place to call home. And our host congregations give our families uh, the comfort of home. So we talk a lot about hospitality and what that looks like. Uh, so our congregations are providing uh, accommodations, meals, hospitality. They're also providing all of the volunteer support. So from 6 p.m. until the next morning at 7 a.m., our congregations are caring for our families, providing meals, providing support, um, providing all of the different pieces that go into Family Promise, including van transportation and um, just being an overall support to our families. Our host sites have amazing volunteers. It takes so much effort to put on a week for Family Promise. And each host week takes uh, anywhere between 50 and 100 volunteers to make happen. Uh, so lots of people. But if everyone does a little bit, a host week is absolutely positive, is actually absolutely possible at all of our host congregations. Um, we also do ask that host congregations have restrooms within their facilities uh, for our guests to use. Uh, it is best to have one for females and one for males, uh, but we do work around really any space that's available. We also ask that they have access to laundry facilities. Um, so again, similar to showers, um, we don't ask that they have it in their building, but that they have access to it. So many of our congregations provide uh, the laundry facilities and showers outside of their building, uh, but they might partner with a local rec center or another center that is willing to uh, let them utilize the shower facilities. And then we ask that all of our host congregations have uh, four to five semi-private to private rooms that are dedicated for our families for the entire week. So on Sunday morning, a host congregation receives the beds that are provided by Family Promise, sets up those four or five bedrooms in preparation for the families, 
and then um, it is dedicated to the families for the entire week. Those bedrooms aren't taken down during the day and put back up in the evening, but rather kept up from Sunday morning until the following Sunday morning. Um, and that is to give our families, again, a space to breathe and a space to be safe and a space for all of their things. So we do encourage them to keep their things unless they are valuables um, in the rooms for the week. And then also having a common area in the congregations is very helpful. A uh, space for meals, homework, fellowship, um, opportunities to be in community with one another, both the families together and also volunteers and just a safe space for everyone to hang out. As we mentioned earlier, we also have a day site center. We are open seven days a week, 359 days out of the year. So we are a resource for families while they're not at the overnight um, shelter at our congregation. So we're open from 7 a.m. in the morning until 5 p.m. so that families really do have 24 hours of a safe space to be. Um, we also, as mentioned earlier, have a computer lab, we have phones, other resources available at the day site. So families uh, can really utilize this as their office space and kind of their day home space. Uh, it's also a very functional place for families to be. We do have three full restrooms, a washer and dryer, a kitchen space, playroom, outdoor play area, and that's also uh, where our staff are. And again, uh, we have staff that are um, supporting not only our families, but our congregations as well. So we're on call 24-7 to support all of our volunteers. These are just some pictures of our staff members um, to familiarize yourself with. Uh, with them so that um, if we're calling you or we're at the host congregations, you know who we are. So uh, Jordan and I already introduced ourselves. Um, Christy Southard is our family advocate and housing locator. She works with our families in the West Jefferson County rotation of Family Promise. So if you are in Jefferson County as a host congregation, you'll see Christy on Monday nights when she helps facilitate life skills classes at your site. And then Jen Silverstein is our our family advocate in our central Denver rotation. So if you're in our central rotation, Jen will visit your congregation on Wednesday evenings to help facilitate those life skill classes. Miriam Rosenblum is, um, actually her job has been slightly updated since then, so she's more of an office coordinator and volunteer coordinator because Miriam has really picked up a lot of different pieces um, since some tr transition of staff last year. So Miriam is our go-to for any bookkeeping, administrative pieces. Um, if you need to help recruiting some more volunteers for your host week, Miriam is a great resource really for all of those logistics pieces. And Mel Davis is our community support assistant. Mel, you will um, receive a, your coordinators will receive a calendar for the week in which you're hosting from Mel, uh, where she kind of gives all the little nitty gritty details of the week, um, specific needs from some of our families, and is really your go-to person if you have um, questions or struggles with your host week or anything. Mel is a great resource for that. And uh, Tally actually just transitioned off of our staff, so she was our MSW intern and brought a lot of support to Christy and case management and some other pieces. On that note, we do often have interns or volunteers who are at our day site, so if you call our day site, and it's not one of these folks that we talked about. Um, again, it takes a village and we are all in this together. So um, lots of staff, lots of volunteers supporting our mission at the day site. And as we briefly mentioned earlier, we do case management with all of the families in our program. So we often get questions from congregations about like what that looks like because congregations are, you know, working from 6 p.m. until 7 the next morning and then families transition on to us and sometimes it can be uh, it can feel very divided, those two different sides of Family Promise. So we love to always bring you into what we're doing with families kind of on the other end. So uh, we are working towards housing, employment, and savings. Those are the really 
big three pillars that we um, support families with. So getting on housing wait lists for anything from transitional shelters such as through Warren Village or Joshua Station or the Lambeth Family Center um, to getting housing vouchers through the Denver Housing Authority or through the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless. Uh, we have lots of great relationships in the community, so we're helping families get on wait lists and support them through that process of housing. As mentioned earlier, we also um, do require that families are either seeking full-time employment or some type of full-time school experience. This is uh, for many reasons, but really we want to set families up for success, and um, that really requires income and it requires uh, education and it requires a lot of different pieces. So that's um, another area that we're supporting families in while they're with us. And we attend lots of community meetings and have a lot of different opportunities to get connected to different employers and help families find um, stable employment while they're with us. And then the savings piece as well. We're working a lot on financial pieces. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we teach life skills classes and a lot of those are geared toward financial and savings. So we're working towards, um, you know, knowing what's on your credit report and knowing how to uh, start paying back some of those debts or, uh, you know, facing that eviction because it will be difficult to find housing again. And just surrounding families and meeting them where they're at in all of these goals and um, really trying to holistically serve families while they're here with us. So that's a little bit of what case management looks like at Family Promise. We have incredible community partners who are supporting us in various ways. And I'll just choose a couple of these, but the top three are um, different entities that help teach our life skills classes, and then the bottom three are some different housing supports that we have. So the Public Service Credit Union helps teach some of our financial classes. Not only that, they have now become a sponsor for our bed race event in September, and they give us supplies every once in a while at our day site, and they have just become a really great, deep um, sponsor, but, but partner also, and um, we really try to support one another in the work that we're doing. And then we also uh, partner often with the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless. Uh, they have incredible services for anybody who's experiencing any type of homelessness um, and it really across the spectrum. So health care to housing to permanent supportive housing to um, therapy to really anything, um, any need that our family that our families are facing. Uh, the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless can often meet families where they're at and help support them in those needs. Well, we want to take a second and just kind of celebrate because Family Promise and all of our congregations and volunteers, um, we do a lot of awesome, great work together. And we love the partnerships that we have with our congregations because they make these stats happen. And so last year we were able to serve 64 families. Uh, that was 202 individuals and 115 of those were children. Uh, it just reminds us that what we do here matters so much. And 88% left our program employed or in school. 85% were more financially stable. They had some, some sort of savings um, account and uh, savings plan. Uh, 77% were more stably housed, and then in total, uh, we were able to provide 8,493 shelter days uh, last year, and again, that is because of you and our, con our congregations like you who are hosting and making this possible. I also want to take a moment to kind of talk a little bit more about our home program. We mentioned it a little bit earlier, and as said, this is how we really become more than a shelter. It's, it's our continued care plan, and it stands for Housing Opportunities Mentor and Education Program. Uh, so ultimately, every family, when they arrive into our program, even in the co uh, core shelter program, uh, we immediately pair them up, like Ali said, with our case managers, uh, either Christy or Jen, 
Um, but as they as they move through our program, find housing, uh, we, we believe that that is an, uh, an integral part of continuing to find uh, self-sufficiency for our families, to have somebody in their corner. Um, and so we want to be that person for them. We want to be that community for them. And so we offer our case management um, to families that move out for up to two years after they've been in um, our program. Our TBRA program, or Tenant-Based Rental Assistant Program, uh, is uh, an amazingly successful program that we have going on right now, and it's because we've got some uh, great relationships that we're building with different landlords um, here in Denver that are willing to work with us and provide affordable housing for our families. And so uh, we are uh, moving forward and, and uh, continuing to try to bring on more of these landlords to be able to provide even more tenant-based rental assistance uh, in the new year. And then lastly, we have our mentorship, mentor relationships, like I've been mentioning. And uh, those mentor relationships are from individuals in congregations or in the community who have said, you know, I want to give back in some way uh, and be able to, you know, be that person who, who they can call, a family can call if they need, or a friend in their life. And so really that's what the goal of our mentor relationships uh, is. It's, it's, a, it's a friendship. We want to have our, our families surrounded by people who, who care about them. One thing I want to add real quick about the TBRA program, because I think it's awesome and I think it's important to know, is that we currently have five families in our TBRA program, and all of them are still uh, successfully housed. And I think that is worth uh, saying. So I wanted to make sure you knew that and heard that. So that is our home program. Some of the some of the statistics, statistics here are we've served 20 families through our home program, and 95% uh, were employed or in school throughout the home program, and 100% were stably housed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, one of our focuses is that we help our families go from su surviving to thriving. Ultimately, families arrive uh, in the midst of crisis. It's it's a difficult season. This is not an uh, an easy uh, program. Even when when they when they come into our program, they've got a lot going on, and then they're coming into a program where uh, they 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 have to move. And so w one of the things we try to do is we try to help them in that moment, kind of catch their breath, because there's a lot going on, and they're they're trying to see and figure out how they can um, get back onto their feet. And and we just want to be. Uh, that that friend next to next to them that can let them know that you're not alone. You've got a, us with you, and uh, you know we're gonna help you get through this time. Uh, so we, that's kind of how families arrive to Family Promise. They're in a crisis season, um, but we want to move them from that. So one of the goals would be helping families find housing. That's the main goal, right? Um, the way you solve homelessness is with a house. Um, so we want to get our families housed. So we are looking for long-term solutions, and, and we are f seeing that success through our home program. And then also, uh, it, when, as our families are going through this process of kind of getting back on their feet, they, they've gone through the crisis season, they, they've maybe left our, our uh, emergency shelter or core shelter program, they found a house. One of the things that, that we want to, to be able to instill in our families is the ability to give back. And we see this all the time. It's one of my favorite parts of working at our day site is being able to see families, uh, former families that are now housed and uh, off uh, pursuing their dreams, able to come back and give back through volunteering their time uh, and serving here at the day site. And they do it with a smile on their face because you can just tell that they know uh, that family promise played a key part in them getting back on their feet. And so that's kind of our goal is to bring families from surviving when they arrive to thriving. And, and it, there's nothing like it when you see that cycle happen. And kind of want to uh, also share some of the needs we have as we look into uh, the remainder of this year. Um, so our 2017 needs, like every year, we're trying to um, create more community awareness. And we believe we play a vital role in our community and 
uh, advocating on behalf of families experiencing homelessness. And so we we want help with that, and we ask and invite you into that process to to help create this awareness of of uh, families who are who are needing help and creating awareness that you know family promise is here for them. Another need that we have is funding, uh, you know, financial support, some some uh, sustaining partnerships uh, is kind of a, a need that we have. So we're looking to the community to to find organizations that align with uh, our mission and uh, feel uh, passionate about um, ending homelessness one family at a time. And we are we are wanting these kinds of long term partnerships so that we can work together to do some good. Creative housing options is are, are a need. Uh, we're looking for new ways to continue to support families and help more families than we even currently can. So we're willing to get creative and kind of go back to the drawing board, so to speak, and figure out what, what can we do or, or what kinds of things can we do as a community to address families experiencing homelessness. And then lastly would be host sites for shelter. We are, we are always wanting to bring on new congregations into our community, uh, one that provides stability for our program, and, and two, it provides support for the other host congregations that are currently serving. Um, and so, we want to be able to surround our team with as many communities as possible. So, we have wonderful host sites currently, and we just are wanting to add to them. Uh, so, if you know of uh, a, a friend um, who maybe worships somewhere. Uh, we encourage you to share what we're doing, and uh, we would love to, you know, to talk more about um, how they could possibly be a host site for Family Promise. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the conclusion of our brief overview of Family Promise. We are so grateful for all of your support and um, look forward to continually partnering with you and your congregation. Thank you. Together, we are ending homelessness one family at a time.